Yo, what up? It's your boy, one JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. Say what's up to the people, Jason. What's going on, everyone? A shout out to the Philadelphia Phillies fans. So, I just want to say this about the fans we get no credit for anything that we do right. I was texting one of my buddies. I'm not even going to say his name because he was very mad. And I told him, it's Philadelphia. Booing is what we do. And he's like, that's not Philadelphia. It's radio and bar stools, which I took total offense to because, you know, I call the radio all the time. And right. I hate bar stools with all my heart. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, no, we boo in the second quarter of Sixers games when they're down by 10 with a 28 and three home record. Right. First drive of the Eagle season, they'll boo. It goes three and out. Yes, they right. will. But at the same time, when you're in the World Series or you're in the playoffs for the first time in 11 years, you sell out standing room only to the loudest crowds everywhere. Away games, 30% Phillies fans in San Diego. Like, we are the best fans in the country. And I know we got a rap for being the worst fans, and but we are the best fans in the country. When we show up, we show out. So we have the right to boo because we cheer so hard, too. And I know everybody brings up the Santa Claus thing and old news. Uh, uh, we punched a cop. Let me just put this out here because this is our podcast. This is our show. We could talk about this, mm-hmm. which no one talks about. Denver won a championship. The Denver Nuggets won a championship. Nine people got shot. Right. Nobody got shot in Philadelphia. When we won the Super Bowl. Not news. Right. <laughs> nope. Nobody got shot in Philadelphia. When we won the Super Bowl. Nine people got shot. Places got robbed. Things got set on fire. 40 people ended up in the hospital. Right. We had a party. We had a party. We had a jammy jam. Like, when we went to the Super Bowl, we flooded the streets and people weren't shooting. But Denver gets people shot and killed, and there's no national outrage media about how bad the fans are. Because there's no narrative. Like, stuff happens out in L.A. all the time. It's it, dangerous out there. Yeah. But, and, and, and this is quote unquote Philadelphia. Right. But people love to crap on Philadelphia fans. And so, what we're leading into is the Trey Turner thing. Um, there's a guy, uh, Captain Phillies or something, said he started it. Uh, I heard Jack Fritz on the radio uh, started. I, I got to check the timelines and see who said it first. <laughs> let's give credit I mean? to Jack. Yeah, let's give credit to Jack. And, uh, you know, it picked up national news. You know, everybody, you know, stand for Trey. Hashtags are popping. Even Jeff Stoutland talked about it at his uh, press conference. Yeah. So, and and they did. He, he They had to wait a long time because he got knocked down to eighth, <laughs> eighth spot. Know, that's but, okay. That's okay. Uh, they did cheer for him. And he afterwards said, that's pretty fucking cool. It was pretty fucking cool. And it was. And again, this is a guy who said on like one, on the first homestand when he had a bad game he's like my mom called me and told me i sucked so i know right he's like it's not just philadelphia like my mom got yeah. on me and that's what i said i was like if his mom could say he sucks i could say he sucks too <laughs> now i didn't say take the contract back and move him out no i know he's going to come back and be Trey Turner i know that it's hard to be here i just want to know what they're doing in in dodgerland like are they giving foot massages right like why is it so hard to play here but not there because LA is a, a big deal. Like and it's a baseball town. Yeah, it's a baseball town. And and they're and they're throwing out contracts like candy. So the pressure is on you. Mm-hmm. And he was out there and I mean, again, I know the lineup, the whole lineup was hitting, but this lineup here is should be generally good. We're just in a lull, and and I think Bryce coming back off the injury and not having his power, there's something of energy feeding off other people's energy. Yep, and they're missing Reese Hoskins, who was the leader. Yeah. Who's and the I, guy who we all talk about, but he was the leader of that team. And I can't stand Reese. Not, yeah, not a fan. I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I can't stand Reese, even though I said in the playoffs last year to run to World Series, all is forgiven. I'm, I'm a, I had to stop. Yep. Cause he showed up, and showed out, and showed out when in the biggest moments when the pressure was on. And so, and his wife was out there doing God's work. Buying beer for everybody. Dropping twelve hundred, twelve thousand dollars on beer. I don't know how much money. She how was come spending. when I go the limits too? <laughs> right. I mean, just you know. But either way, uh, <laughs> that was that was awesome. That whole thing with him was awesome. So for him being the leader of the team, I get it. But we we also are going to let him go after this year, right? Yes, they are. They're going to let him go, and Probably. unless he come now that he's hurt, they might bring him back on a one year deal on the cheap. Right. 
so he can go out and prove it or whatever. But I mean, like, is he that important to this team? I, I don't think he is, but I mean, what else could it be at this point, right? They play such a weird brand of baseball this year. When you watch them, they're inconsistent. You got guys hit for a little bit. The only guys that really come through time and time again are the young guys. Stott, Bohm, and Marsh are the only three guys that uh, come through whenever you need it. The rest of the guys are either hot or ice cold. There's never an in-between. So, mo money, mo problems, right? I mean, I never had that, so. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, you you got problems, but if you had more money, you'd have more problems, apparently, because everybody who's getting a check on that team is having a performance anxiety issue. Right. All the young Thundercats are showing up and showing out because yep. they don't have $100 million on their chest. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. They're like, I understand where Trey's at, but he's making $300 million. Like, it's always attached to every statement of everything he does. Right. He makes one error. You're making $300 million. You can't make that error. I personally, I mean, as a fan, you know, I mean, yeah. I get annoyed as I don't know what, but I'm like, yo, at least you can tell your kid, yo, that dude makes $300 million. Still he made an error. It's going to happen every once in a while, but I mean, he's making too many errors, uh, but it's affecting him all over. So just showing him love, like my, my whole thing was nothing can hurt. If you bench him for two games or a week, Alex Rodriguez got benched and moved down to the A spot yep. after winning two MVPs. I don't want to hear shit right. about him not being able to play, right? I like, would give him a week off, honestly, or, you know, one of those fake injuries where you can put him down for two weeks just yeah. until he yeah. just clear your head. Because right now you can tell he's pressing so bad every at bat. Especially at home yes. when they're about to have this quote unquote easy schedule at home. Yeah. That they, that, mind you, they play down to their competition all the time. All the time. But, I would have given him some time off and I still might give him some time off depending on how he comes around because you can't keep giving him standing O's and you're not going to give one to Schwarby and you know, or Nola or Nola <laughs> and Nola should hopefully be a little bit better off. Cause he'll, now they got a little bit of help in pitching. So his rotation day will go down by one. So have yeah. one more day of rest. Uh, and so he's just giving up more home. He's giving up twice as many home runs as he did last year. He's let it. He's three more home runs than games pitched it. Yeah. That's not great. That's not great. When he and misses with his pitches because he doesn't have the great velocity, he misses dead center and it gets crushed. <sighs> They're not even like just over the wall home runs. They're bombs. Yeah. And so we, we've got to get it together. We've got to get it together. I keep waiting. Last night when Turner came up, I think it was in the eighth, whatever, they were down by two and there was somebody on. I'm like, he's hitting a home run and that place is going to explode. It's going to be insane. And he didn't. And he didn't. I, I, <laughs> I was like, <"Ugh."> So... <laughs> Storybook time. Nope. We we talked about this off air, but during the Pittsburgh game in the third <laughs> inning, you, and it's funny because you remember exactly the tweet too. I was livid <laughs> at just the dumb play. I'm like, you're you're making bad plays in the outfield. You're not calling for the ball. Mm -hmm. I turned off the game. I'm like, I can't watch this anymore. There was a play last night like that, and I and so I haven't I haven't watched a full. I watched last night because I wanted to see if they stood or if they booed or if they didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I watched the game last night, but. From that first Pirates game, I didn't watch all week, win or lose. I, w I went back, I watched the highlights, um, right. you know, because my thing automatically tapes all the games anyway. But I didn't watch any game live because no matter what they do, it is frustrating because they keep the game so close. Yeah. And so you're like, rock hard, wait and explode. <laughs> and then they just say, ah, we're not going to finish. And you're like, oh, want, want, want. Yeah. Or boom, home run, ninth inning, 10th inning. Oh, and so it's it's just it's it's so stressful. There's no joy, no, no fun. joy. That's the best phrase ever about it. Yeah, there's no joy. There's no comfort in watching Phillies right now. There's a lot of pressure. Like all that uh, pressure that uh, uh Yay feeling. I kept calling him. I called and I called him <laughs> Yay. Yay Turner. <laughs> Yay. I was like, I, no, no, no. Yay Turner, like yeah, Kanye West. I want the old Kanye. I, I want the old Trey Trey. I don't yeah, want man. this new Trey. I want the old Yay. Yay Turner is who I got right now because he is not handling the pressure but again i i i was again i was arguing with my buddies talking about fans and, and people and i'm like look i even say when i call in the radio and I, before i bash them good guy good family uh a human being an individual yeah. a person i get all that Just but at the same the time the i need to hit the ball <laughs> and not not only do i need you to hit the ball i need you to stop swinging at things that i wouldn't swing at right and i'm not a baseball savant 
I am not the greatest baseball. <laughs> I, I, there are little league girls that are 10 years old that are better than me across this nation in every state. I'll say that. And I still win swing <laughs> as some of the stuff he's sw- the dude is touching earth with his knee. Yeah, it's so weird. Reach because once he sees at the plate, he's like, "Oh my god, the ball's nine feet out there. I'm already swinging now. Might as well reach even further." They and you're Castellanos like, chase the most outside pitches that I've ever seen in my life. In my life, and again, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, it, "It's such bad baseball right now. It makes me doubt my fandom of baseball." <laughs> I'm looking at him like, "Do I even know what I'm talking about? Do I know what I'm seeing?" Because I feel real upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching it, and then and then you know what I do? You know what I do to make sure that I I still know a little something about baseball? I watch the Cincinnati Reds game and I watch Ella De La Cruz. God, he's so fun. And then I turn on the Angels <laughs> and I watch Shotani. <laughs> and I'm like, now them boys out here balling. <laughs> now, mind you, uh, 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 MV3 Bryce Harper, my guy, uh, the best looking man, the sexiest man in baseball, Mister Baseball himself. Like if you had a baseball player, mm-hmm. and it, it is Bryce Harper. That that is the prototype. Okay, the I say that. King. Yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, what? shut up about my man. He is. Look, I love watching him, man. He's the best. Look, let me tell you something. Showed up in that Kelly Green jersey. Let, let me tell you something <laughs> about Bryce Harper. Okay, Bryce Harper is Philadelphia now. It is pumping yeah. through his veins. He's like they ain't booing me. Oh, like, not, not only, <laughs> look, look. The day the and and I I say this honest to God, I don't care what he does while he's here. He is my guy. Yeah. I love Bryce Harper. Facts. Again, I'll say like I always say. Thank you for choosing me, Bryce. Thank you for choosing me. I have grown up in this city, and I have suffered my whole entire life. I'm looking at you right now, Bryce, in your eyes, just so you know that I love you. He's flirting with you. I, I am. Not, not flirting with you, Bryce. You can have it. Anything you want. Anything I got, Bryce, you can have. If there's, you want a camera? I ain't got much, Bryce. But if you want it, I got you. Because you came here. No one ever chooses me. No one ever picks me, okay? And he's brought friends. Hey, he's look, got other guys to come, too. I went to five proms, okay? I know what it feels like to be chosen. And in the sports world, nobody took me to prom nobody <laughs> took me unless you got drafted which means that your mom said take him to the prom i couldn't get nobody here <laughs> bryce chose me and then he brought all his good looking girlfriends out here <laughs> and brought them on the team now i mean some of them ain't putting out like they're supposed you to know, I guess, do, right? but, you know but they're here you yeah. know what i mean they're here I, I know i'm going off on the rails but i'm just saying thank you i'm just you. having her at the party You're right exactly <laughs> thank you for choosing me bryce harper you are not a pander you are the king you are mr philadelphia the fanatic is flowing through your veins now back to the story uh i, I do got a, qu- I got a question for you that asked me did the cheering you think put too much pressure on Trey Turner? So I'll say this uh, again, not even jokingly as a, as a rational human being, when you are, I, I'll tell you a perfect example. Mm-hmm. I was driving home and uh, a girl called me. She's like, Oh, what are you doing? What's that like? <laughs> it's good when the ladies call. It's always good when the ladies call. I take my phone's off. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> she said, what are you doing? I said, uh, Oh, I'm driving home from my buddy's house. She's like, Oh, what'd you do? I'm like, oh, I just went and gave him a hug. And she's like, for what? I was like, yeah, I just went and gave him a hug. She's like, well, what else? I mean, what else to do? She's like, I'm like, nothing. I needed it. She's like, okay. I was like, what happened? I was like, he called me. He said, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He said, I'm feeling down. And I said, oh, you all right? He's like, no, not really. I said, you need a hug? And he's like, I could use a hug. I was like, all right. right. I hung up the phone. I drove 33 minutes to his house. Knocked on the door, opened the door. I gave him a hug for like a good four minutes, five minutes. Yeah. Pat on the back. I was like, you need anything else? Probably felt great. And he was like, nah, man, I appreciate you. I was like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I mean, I, I go get you some juice, some tea, a drink, you know, some beer, something, anything you want. He's like, nah, man, I, I, thank Just you so hug, much. Yeah. Thank you so much. I gave him another hug real quick, rode out, got in the car and drove home. And she's like, that's the strangest thing in the world. Shouldn't be. And though. I'm like, he needed someone to care about him. Yep. Yeah. He needed to feel like somebody cared. I don't know what's going on in his life. And again, as a man, you know how it is. Yeah. I didn't ask him any questions. If he wanted to tell me, he'd tell me. If he if he wanted to uh, explain, because I said, I'm here. You know what I mean? If you want to talk, he, wanted, he didn't want to talk. He didn't right. want to explain. He just wanted to feel something and feel like somebody cares. So I, I do believe that a standing ovation could help Trey Turner. If nothing else, it did lift his spirits and let him know that like this rough, tough right. city we're not also, against you. Yes, this rough, tough city also has love and open arms for me. So 
I do believe that that made a difference and not only made a difference in that moment, but it should make a difference going down the line. Because again, two weeks later, my buddy called me and he was like, I was thinking about committing suicide that day. Mm -hmm. And you randomly texted me and then you came over, you gave me a hug. He's like, yeah, I was just going through stuff. You know what I mean? He had just lost a family member and he didn't want to talk about it. He's like, and then you came over and he's like, he's like, I really, you know, I thought, I thought about that for like two days that you came over and you just hugged me. Yeah. He's like, and you didn't, you questioned me. You didn't say you didn't have time for me. You know, he's like, and I thought like all the other people in my life that like need me and I, I you know, depend all the stuff. But because I took the time to do something nice, the fact that those 30,000 people did stand up and ch cheer for him. It matters. It matters. Yeah. And again, I, I don't know how much it matters. I don't know how much is going to change. Right. But for the narrative of Philadelphia, it you matters. never know how you right. can make somebody's day or life change. Um, and, and no, no, he makes three hundred million dollars. He's still a person, dude, and he's going through a rough spot. Like I, yeah, I he said, wants he had, to hit the ball. Yeah, and <laughs> I said he has the yips, and everybody, I, they were like, I don't think he has the yips. Like I don't know what else you call it. Right. He, he can't hit. He can't feel. Like his whole thing is jacked up. So other than sending him out there with Harden to go strip and dip and get his mind off of it, <laughs> I don't know. Else. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Like I don't know what else to do. So uh, hopefully he gets he gets right. I do believe he's going to get right. It it might. It might take him to the postseason. It, it might, might take, take him till, till next year. Till next year. Look at Cassiano <laughs> stunk all last year and then was an all star this year. Yeah. And yeah. then immediately came back and couldn't hit again. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. and again, that does happen in baseball, but oh yeah, you go hot and cold. Um, but yeah. I, it's crazy how this season they've just been cold most of the season. Yeah. It 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 is insane how that worked out. Yeah. But again, uh let's it, get in the playoffs and let's go. It doesn't hurt to love up on somebody, you know, like a shoot. Uh, when Ben Simmons hit a three, we all cheered. we cheered for nine right. days. It didn't work for him, and then he trashed us. So he's a weirdo. Markel Fultz, we tried. Yeah, and, and Markel spoke nicely of the city. Yeah, there's afterwards, a new Philadelphia. You know though. what I mean? So right. you know, it. Like I said, I, I just hate that we get such a bad rap just because we're we're honest and true. Like yep. we're real fans. Like we are, you know, ride or die and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, also there was a, a Reddit uh, sub forum okay. and like. A thousand people went and donated to um, Trey Turner's foundation or something awesome. that he likes to right. that he supports. Good. So again, there's all kinds of positiveness going out there in the world for all the negative and complaining that we all do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like shoot, people complain about you at your job all the time. I'm sure. No, I'm amazed. Jason didn't do the spreadsheet the way I've told him <laughs> to do the spreadsheet. Yeah, you know I mean, so it is what it is. But uh, hopefully the Phils get it right. We got to get in this playoff situation. Uh, right now, we're a little bit outside looking at We got time, and we have a favorable schedule. Your boy, JT, who you're wearing a shirt that says, Thou shalt not steal. Uh, I think he did get stolen a lot lately, but <clears throat> yeah, a little bit. His, his hand's hurting. You know what I mean? Let's put it on that. Yeah. And I will say, too, that um, with as far as <laughs> JT's concerned, he said, I'm happy for this next month. I feel like we've been on a, on the road the whole season. They have been. Because they've had the most away games than yeah. anybody else. Now they're about to have the most Some home, home stand than anybody else. They have the most home games left of the rest of the league. So cheese steaks for everybody. Yeah, there is that too. You know what I mean? Sleep in your own bed, seeing your family yeah. more than one day a week. And so mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, I mean, we get our ball rolling. And uh, well, I've been trying real hard not to post negative stuff about them this year because yeah. everybody, for some reason, thinks I'm super negative because I get upset when they lose. Yeah. I mean, but again, I just care. Cardiac kids, bro. Right. You're sitting there rocking and teetering mm -hmm. on the end of the game. You're like, to lose and then lose the way we lose sometimes. Oh, it's so it's bad. not even like you're losing because of bad pitching. Right. Your 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 defense is losing you games. Mm -hmm. And again, Schwarber missing a ball that's like out in the corner left field. Like he can only run so fast. He's a big guy, but he hustles. I didn't expect Marsh to miss that one last night in left field either. Oh. He catches everything. I know. And but then he, he thought it was foul. And then yeah. the coach challenged it when it was not even close. I like. I'm like, what is going on? And again, for me, I'm sitting there like semi frustrated, but I'm watching it later. Yeah. I'm not even watching it live. So did you, the worst play was the next play, though, when the Royals bunted, they did the safety squeeze, and Hoffman, the pitcher, fielded the ball, and he wait, he was unsure oh. if he should go to home right away, so he took yeah. like a a second to decide what he was going to do. And like, you have to know ahead of time where you're going with that ball. Yeah, I have that, to know. And that's crazy, too, because that's something like you tell kids all the time, too. Yeah, like, like if they bunt, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But just like nobody ever bunts. So right. <laughs> especially in, in baseball, they don't bunting is any doesn't happen. But, you know, everybody's calling for it. Just play small ball. Do something yeah. to help us out. Um, 
so yeah, the the Phils, they're gonna get it right. The fans are great. We're great. Everyone's great. This is Philadelphia. We're the best. Fuck everybody else. Yeah, hearts. Um, hearts. <laughs> hearts. Uh, now let's talk about football real quick. We're just gonna run through some things and um, talk about the division, so we can come back later and say that I was right and you were wrong. I like that. Yeah, and if you happen to be right, I'll just delete, You'll the, delete tape. the whole thing. Yeah, say ex- a technical glitch. Exactly, because that's how I do things. <laughs> I understand that. That's <laughs> I remember, a smart way to go about it. It's the man. I wish I could do it everything in life, girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> and then just uh, rewind. Remember, all our predictions are guaranteed to win. Yeah. or your money back. Locks it's free. Locks. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with the uh, AFC North. AFC North. I have the Bengals winning the division. Okay. I have the Ravens challenging. Burrow is Burrow, and the team has been solid. They haven't lost anybody, and I just believe in Burrowism, even though they played a lot of weak schedule games and they get a lot of lucky wins by the defense. I know everybody looks at Burrow, but I actually went through like all of his games for the last three years. Mm-hmm. The defense is winning these games. Sometimes he's like throwing up one touchdown late or the defense gets a pick and he's got a short field. And I love Burrow, but I'm like, ah, when you actually look at game by game, this defense has been balling for him. And when they don't, that's when he has a problem. But uh, the Ravens are going to challenge. What say you? Uh, Bengals, again, even with Burrow's calf injury, luckily it wasn't a serious injury that was going to cost him to miss some game time. Uh, And I had the Steelers challenging them. Best coach team in the division. Second year quarterback in the system. They got uh, Pickens, the receiver, ready to emerge as a star. Watt should be healthier this year. And I think they're ready to make a push again. Oh, you make me sick. Because I love Tomlin. I, I love me some Tomlin. <laughs> so I can't even, can't even go against that. You can love me some Tomlin. Uh, AFC East. East. Nobody circles the wagon like the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to give it to the Buffalo Bills. Even though the quarterback's going to throw 92 interceptions, <laughs> they're still going to win the division. And the only team that can challenge them in the division are the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 and that mushroom eating pot slinging Aaron Rodgers telling you to <laughs> R-A-L-E-X-X-X. Uh, <laughs> uh, too many X's. Oh, what's just happening there? Stay off of that website. Hey, too many relaxes. <laughs> That's not the right website. Uh, what say you? Uh, Bills win the division again. They still have the best quarterback in the division, and I have the Dolphins challenging them. I was going to give the Dolphins the division, but with the Jalen Ramsey injury that he's out till December, I can't give them the nod there. Plus, if I said the Dolphins were going to be above the Bills uh, at home, I would have issues. <laughs> <laughs> got, got to keep your lady happy. Got to be smart. Got to be smart. <laughs> got to keep your lady happy. I, I think the Jets are going to be very much overrated this season. I see. I. I. We're, are we going to find out? We're we we going to find out. Uh, AFC South. I have the easiest one. The Prince of Princes, the King of Kings, Mister Luscious Locks himself, the Jags, <laughs> and uh, Doug Dougie. Ice Cream Peterson <laughs> getting it done. And uh, I just, you know, they they went. They were an inch away from getting to the championship game last year. So <clears throat> they're nothing but sky's the limit for them now. They're going to be rock and rolling. And then to challenge them, I am going out on the board and I'm saying the Texans. Just because I love D'Amico and I love that they, they were uh, excited in the draft and they got the guys they wanted to get and they went after it. So hopefully the Texans challenge the Jags. By the way, anything worse when we agree all the time? Three divisions, the three division winners, we agree. Yeah, like no no drama, no nothing. No, 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 because we're smart. Because we're, we're smart, yeah. yeah. I have the uh, Titans challenging the Jags in that division. I think the Texans are a year away with the rookie quarterback. I think it, uh, to install that culture and that system, the Texans are going to take a season to get there. Vrabel still has Derrick Henry to lean on. That mm. defense is usually pretty good, even though they're slowly turning things over to a younger group of guys over there. But I still think the Titans will be the second best team. Sounds good. Sounds good. AFC West! The West! This oh, is the, hey, we're gonna agree again. This is the dumbest division <laughs> that we're gonna talk about because obviously it's the Kansas City Chiefs, yeah, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes <laughs> and his annoying wife and annoying brother. But they're trying to go back to their 18th uh, Super Bowl. So the only challenges they have are the overrated Herbert, and hopefully everybody stays healthy this year <laughs> because they had so many injuries all at the same time. But they still have a horrible coach, so who knows. But the Chargers are the only ones that could even possibly challenge the Chiefs. But the Chiefs are going to win that division. And you're going to say the exact same. The Chiefs are definitely going to win the division, even with Travis Kelsey's horrible mustache. Woo! That thing was, uh, that needs to go. Trash. Really bad. But give me the 
new coach in the division, Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos to give the Chiefs a little bit. Russ's resurgence. Russ doesn't cook anymore. He microwaves. Oh, Things God. aren't as good, but he's going to do his best out there. And now that they went from having possibly the worst coach in NFL history to a competent coach, I expect the Broncos to turn it around quickly. You are out of your mammy jammy mind. But okay, we're going to find okay. out. <laughs> Let us move now to the NFC North. I am taking the king of the jungle, the Lions. They are going to do it. And I know you're looking at me thinking that they're not. They uh, are. Just shut up. No. They lost six games by no. three or less points last year. The quarterback came on, throwing touchdowns, no interceptions. to like six interceptions in the last 10 games. That offense is rolling. The defense made moves. It, it, the culture, biting kneecaps, they're fighting and they're clawing. <laughs> it's the Lions. And the only ones that can challenge them are Kirk Cousins, the Vikings, the regular season champions of the last 22 years as long as Kurt's been there. Oh, man. So I originally wasn't going to do this, but after we talked about it and, you know, doing some things, I also went to Jared, going with the Lions to win the division. I changed my mind on that one. I can't trust Kurt. You, you won me over on that one. See, because we did have technical difficulties. <laughs> and then now, see, he on my side because he heard side. he heard me in the back of his mind good, when I good, told him what I did. Okay, good. But give me, I'm going to love the Packers to challenge the Lions in that division. You Packers saw. Packers turn it over. You saw. One pass in preseason. No, I didn't. No. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I never seen it. You're a liar because no. I saw it. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Yeah. There was one pass that he was backpedaling off to his left, off the back foot. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did he throw a <laughs> dime into double coverage yeah. over the top? And I was like, mm -hmm. but it's uh, insurance and teachers. Using, so we'll uh, see. Using the, old, the Bill Simmons, Patrick Ewing theory, when the star is gone now, that the rest of the team steps up. So give me the pack. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see about that. Uh, NFC East, E A G L E S Eagles, of course, because Jalen Hurts is the best. And yeah, the sex, the, the only one challenging. <laughs> and their coaches mean now. And then, oh, my God. <laughs> that, okay. We're going to talk about that at the, at the end of this list. Um, so the Eagles, obviously, and Dallas, because no division winner ever repeats for the last 20 years. So if it's not going to be the Eagles, then it's going to be Dallas, because on paper, they're paper kings, yep. and they have a terrible coach, so it doesn't matter in the postseason. Yep. Say you. Same thing, Eagles and Cowboys. I don't really think the Cowboys are that much of a threat. You see, I have seen the Dak videos of him throwing interceptions in camp after he said he wasn't going to do that anymore. <laughs> and I still see him. I see him. Uh, and the only dark horse of the Giants. I, I was going to ask you, do you think the Giants are a serious dark horse? I, I know they made the playoffs last year, but I, I just, I don't see it. I think their head coach is the reason why the Buffalo Bills throw 92 interceptions and Daniel Jones is taking a step forward. Yeah, for sure. I do believe that that coaching, that culture has changed and they are a semi dark horse, dark horse to be <laughs> the second or third team possibly but i mean and never no, washington yeah never, ever, ever. Who, 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 <laughs> why are you talking about them I, technical difficulties what are you talking about <laughs> um the nfc south yeah mm -hmm. i am taking the saints and Carr, who's a mediocre guy <laughs> in a mediocre world with outstanding wide receivers now again so i think he's going to be okay mm -hmm. and then to challenge them I'm going to say, and I'm sticking with my pick, even though you made a compelling case the last e episode. Mm -hmm. When we almost had an episode. Yes. I'm taking the Panthers still because I just think that something's going on down there in, in the Carolinas, and I'm just taking the Panthers. It's just a feel. There's no yeah. real reason for that. That's fair. I have the Falcons winning the South. Mm. They uh, run the ball better than almost anybody in the league. They got Bijan, who's a definite game changer. They have... Kyle Pitts, Drake London, all they need is Ritter to be somewhat competent, which Mariota was just absolutely hard last year. They upgraded the defense with a bunch of free agents. They had a Jesse Bates from the Bengals. So give me the Falcons to win that division. And I'm following suit with you. The Panthers just are building something down there. It's going to take a little bit, but the rest of the South is not building anything. So give me the Panthers in second. The Saints are compelling. I think Carr is mid. Kamara suspended for a couple of games. Michael Thomas is probably hurt again for God knows how long. Oh, he's, he's hurt? Just, no, but he's always hurt. So I'm just, you know, oh, okay. Probably don't don't scare me about my okay. I apologize for All you. right. Let's let's no bad juju. Last one. Last one. NFC West. Yeah. I am taking 
the Seattle Seahawks to win the division. Geno's out here still not writing nobody back, <laughs> earning everything he needs. They made a lot of moves. They're vamping up things second year, second confidence. He's got wide receivers out the wazoo to like sling it to. We're still going to cry about not drafting DK Metcalf 19 years later. <laughs> We're going to die in Philadelphia bringing up the fact that we didn't get Justin Jefferson and DK Metcalf, yeah, even, even though, though they've got <laughs> everybody passed on DK Metcalf. We're still going to cry about it mm-hmm. all the time to the end of time and then uh the only threat to them is the 40 whiners uh, and that just depends on their quarterback situation which is so up in the air i think purdy's going to get exposed this year but that defense is still deadly yep. still deadly Always. so that's where i'm at yeah they're you know the niners have are well renowned for the having this offensive genius of a coach that wins with their defense their defensive coordinator is gone now they have nothing at the quarterback position that you can rely on trusting McCaffrey to stay healthy for another year to keep that offense rolling. And all those things just lead to them coming in second place in the division to me. Give me the Seahawks again. We agree again. This has been one of our worst podcasts because we just agree on everything. There's no fun, no arguing. Just Seahawks also pure hate for the 49ers. You have the worst takes in America. No one trusts you. How about that? How about that? And you got hair. You make me sick <laughs> with your hair. Yeah, your stupid mustache. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, the, that's the Kels brother right yeah. here. Right, now, now I'm going to start calling by his real name. Kels. <laughs> Kels. Because he's got that stupid porn hippie stash. Uh, oh, he's like, oh, I, I, I follow the player. Yeah. And so I got to do something to change the narrative. Let me grow a stash real quick. So uh, let's talk about that in football. Last year, John Ritchie on the radio was upset the whole training camp about how soft practices are now Mm -hmm. at the end of the day we were the healthiest team to enter a super bowl in the last like 40 years right 22 out of 22 starters just unheard of unprecedented so no need for that wear and tear no and one thing that he said that sticks in my mind was I guess Charmin, Sharpen, Charmin. And it it was hysterical to (laughs) me. That's a good one, though. Oh, it was great. I'm about to put it on a (laughs) t-shirt because it is just the thing that, like, Charmin, Sharpen, Charmin. So now this year, we have our coach doing what, Jason? Oh, he's he's, uh, focusing on the details, we'll call it. But he's uh, trying to be a hard-o this year, coming out being a uh, tough coach instead of a player's coach. And he don't got time for your mistakes. And the media is just like, oh my God, yeah. he's being so hard on the quarterback and the players and the blah, blah, blah. Personally, you want to talk about fraudulent or uh, what did you say about uh, pandering? pandering? I think this is pandering. Oh yeah, he's another one. The, the, no, sure. he is a pandering. Absolutely. He's got, he's got like, he's got to go through a losing season of and still being himself for me to believe that it's him. Bryce has gone through ups and downs here already. And he's right. always still got right. the green cleats on. He's, he's got the gloves. Like, he's doing what right. he does. Like, he's believable. Sirianni has got to go through a losing spell and still be wearing these T-shirts and talking this trash to for me to believe that that's who he is. Yeah. Because in rough times, that's when it shows up. So now he's doing this in training camp, and everybody's like, oh, my God, he's being so rough on the players. The players are being rough. And I'm like, I was talking to Iraq yeah, on, on made Twitter. Jalen Hurts do push-ups. Yeah, and I was talking to Iraq on Twitter. I'm like, yo, back in the day, John Runyon was punching people in the face. Right. Like the the quarterbacks were getting in scuffles with backup quarterbacks. Like running backs would be punching D linemen. Like there were scuffles and fights all the time. Mm-hmm. And now a talking to is a big deal and a right. problem. Yeah. When again, mentally to me, J- Jalen Hurts is the most adult person on that team besides yes. Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Yes. They're literally the two, the three adults in that team is Lane Johnson, Kelsey, and Hertz, and then everyone else. Every single coach even comes after them because I saw my head coach out there wilding out, and Hertz having to be like, "Yo, coach, back up, right? Calm down, like tone it, like can we, can we bring it down twenty two percent? Like I know we're up right now, dog, yeah. but act like you've been here before. I know you haven't, but act like it. So that dude's mental." is a lot higher than a lot of other people on the team. You know what I thought of when I saw him getting yelled at by the coach? What'd you think? It made me think of Pop and Tim Duncan, Mm. where Tim Duncan was the one where Pop would get on him all the time so that everyone else on the team would be like, oh, shit, if he's going to take that yelling, then I guess I got to get my stuff together. Well, it's it's the no one's above the law. Correct. No one's above the law. And Jalen can take that. (laughs) And not only can he take it, he doesn't care. Right. It washes over him like water. Mm-hmm. I, hey, look, you're, you're kind of, I would like to see them both go uh, corny sayings for corny sayings back in a conversation. Just you know. Well, Jalen Hurts has a book of um, cliches, cliches, 
uh what's, what's the other dang puns he has a pun book where he's just out here like you Rems know saying do. yeah <laughs> well my my fr- I, I gotta get us some shirts to say the standard is the standard yeah. i'm gonna make us some shirts to say it because i haven't i haven't seen that anywhere that's that's my favorite thing that he said that's the thing i stand on people say go back to super bowl is hard i don't care my, my dude said, told me every day 40 times a day the all standard season the, the standard, standard is the standard so once you reach the super bowl mm-hmm. that is now the standard the next step is winning the Super Bowl. Mm. So I want to win a Super Bowl. I don't care about anything else. The standard is the standard. You, you got to the playoffs, you lost. Cool. Next year, you make it to Super Bowl. Now, every year, I need to get to the Super yep. Bowl. Yep. I need to win a Super Bowl. The standard is the standard. You set the standard. That's it. A barring injury, of course. Major injury, the standard is the standard. And our standard is now the Super Bowl. They, they have to be the best team in the NFC or they've missed expectations. Yeah. They and have I, to be. And I have not. I don't have any kind of like a uh, feeling towards saying that he's got to be, they've got to be the chiefs. There are the Patriots. The Patriots right. are in a weak division for so long. They just rack up those, they wins, just rack up those wins. Field. We are not in a quote unquote weak division because of the Cowboys. They're threatening on paper, but the conference is weak. Yeah. So Take we should, you, we should be in the mix mm-hmm. as the better franchise, as the better team, as the better leadership. I don't want to hear it. The standard is the standard. And uh, that's where I'm at with that. Anything else you want to talk about before we get done today? Uh, we did top five quarterbacks last time. Did we want to go back into that? Or do you want to not do that? Top five quarterbacks. Go back into that one. Top five quarterbacks. You're right. We're supposed to do that. Top five quarterbacks this year. This is for yeah. this year. Watch your mouth. Don't. Well, you can say whatever you want to say. I'm, top five quarterbacks this year. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person looking at me right now on the uh, internet. The three people watching our podcast. <laughs> if they made it this far. Um, okay. Top five quarterbacks this year. Do you want to go first or me? Uh, I want you to go first. You had a good okay. curveball last time. Right. My Unless top, you need time. No, no, no. You need time. I no, got no, you. No, no, no. My, my top five quarterbacks this year, mm-hmm. number one, Jalen Hurts, mm-hmm. who will win the MVP of the league this Let's season. Go. It is Jalen Hurts, number one. Number two, second in voting in MVP is Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. He is the second best quarterback this year in the NFL. Okay. The third is Burrow. Now, I know I said what I said earlier about him, but Burrow is a beast, and he will get all the accolades that he deserves. And in the AFC, he's the third runner-up for MVP. Mm-hmm. Then it's going to be Allen. I throw a pick every other touchdown. Josh. For number four. For right? number four. Yeah. And number five. Do you remember your five? Jared Goff. Ooh, he went to Jared. Jared Goff. He, hey, he is a dark horse for number one. <laughs> he's a dark horse. He's the number five that can leap to number one. So that's it. Hurts, Mahomey. Burrow, Allen, Golf. That is that is a list. That's mine. That's a list. All right, my top five QBs. I got Mahomes one until somebody knocks the king off. There's nothing mm. we can do about it, even though let's hope it's not true. Give me Burrow second. He's just proven so much over the past couple of years. Give me Hertz third as the best quarterback in the NFC. Hopefully making a big, strong push towards Joe Burrow to be the second best quarterback. And hell, hopefully he gets the one. Allen four and Trevor Lawrence five, and we yeah. all skip Justin Herbert. So, because Justin Herbert's a fugazi. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something outside of this list that makes me mad about what you're talking about. Let's go. You're living in a world where the AFC mm-hmm. is the West Coast Conference and basketball. Yeah, the Western Conference. The Western Conference. Conference. I said West Coast. <laughs> West Western Coast? Conference and basketball. Yeah. It, is right now. it actually is. And so they're going to be beating each other up. Mm-hmm. So as much as Allen might look good, yeah. Herbert might beat him in a game or something. For sure. Mahomes is going to destroy somebody or somebody's going to destroy Mahomes. And it's going they're going to make each other look bad mm-hmm. at certain points where the, the, the numbers are taken down for them. As opposed to Hurts, if he shows up against half of his uh-huh. AFC opponents, mm-hmm. it's going to light him up like a rocket ship we win in kc which i do believe they're going to do that's going to do leaps and bounds he's going to Whoa. beat patrick mahomes and they're going to be like oh, oh my goodness we can just make the parade plans then and then happens. and then he's going to beat josh allen because mm-hmm. josh is going to throw a couple picks in the kelly green jerseys and the kelly green jerseys and it's going to be like oh uh-huh. hurts <laughs> and then i don't care what happens after that with the afc dudes as long as he beats those two <laughs> and the afc because they're they're yeah. you know what i mean like mm-hmm. we play the Bengals this year no so I ain't got to worry about that. As long as he beats Patrick Mahomes. As far as I know, they don't. And Allen, <laughs> let's look at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, then that's all we need to do for him to get MVP. And he's going to do that. I actually think Trevor Lawrence has a big chance to jump up, too, from five to up higher. Yeah. I mean, they want him. 
Yes. They they want him. He'll get the media push also. Oh my god, they want him so bad. They want to put him on a poster. He's got gray hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He can't hold a football in the rain though. Oh, uh, sure can't. <laughs> I get sweaty out my um my spaghetti out there. <laughs> I get sweaty. So <laughs> <laughs> little hey, got an Eminem run in there. So uh, yeah, uh it. yeah. Uh we're we're back. We're we're gonna be generally semi consistent. Had OG Wade on last time. I actually, I'm going to try and get a uh, E-Rock to come and do a show. I don't know if I can get him with us or if I get him by myself because his timing yeah. and your timing, because you got a rocking schedule right now. It's, it's full tilt for you. Hey man, you know, you're in, you're, you're in a go season right now for the kids. Coaching, coaching. That's right. And so, uh, yeah. Um, leave us a comment. If you made it this far, tell us what your top five are. Yeah, share I'm, it with a friend. Yeah. Sh- <laughs> share it with a friend. That's give somebody you, a hug that needs a hug. My fa- Give somebody a hug that needs a hug. <laughs> uh, my other favorite thing to say is if you suffer through it, make someone else suffer through it. So you don't have to suffer alone. Yeah. So, <laughs> And if you thought the show was bad, just know the standard is the standard. The standard is the standard. I mean, it's only up from here. It's all, we'll it's get all, better. It's only up from here. Rents do. <laughs> Rents. <laughs> Uh, I mean, boy, <laughs> AKA Black Gritty. That is Jason, aka IQOZ Sports on the Twitter, because uh, we're still not calling it X yet. Uh, Never gonna. We're out. Yep. <laughs>